In yet another installment of Everyone's Racist, Chris Harrison won't host the next Bachelorette despite apologizing twice for defending contestant Rachel Kirkconnell after she was accused of racially insensitive behavior. If you don't watch the show, congratulations. But Kirkconnell is white, currently trying to marry the black male star, making her a pretty lame racist. Meanwhile, an inner circle of hell called The Talk is shutting down for a few days to investigate a conversation when co-host Sharon Osbourne defended Piers Morgan over Meghan Markle. I feel even mm -hmm. like uh, I'm about to be put in the electric chair because I have a friend who many people think is a racist, so that makes me a racist. Tell me, when you have heard him say racist things, it, educate me. I don't want anybody here to to l watch this and say that we're attacking you for being racist. I think that okay? seed's already sown. But Osborne's co-host Cheryl Underwood said Sharon was giving validation to something he, Morgan, has uttered that is racist. What was said that was racist? Dumb question. Doesn't matter. In a moral panic, evidence becomes unnecessary. All one needs is the accusation to burn the witch. Just to note, the controversial discussion was on air. So why investigate it when you can just watch it? That's also part of the moral panic. We must do something now or we will be next in the barrel. It makes me wonder, just by doing this monologue in which I appear to defend Osborne, must I be investigated for giving validation to a validation of a person accused of racism? And if anyone here agrees with me, do they then merit an investigation for validating my validation of Sharon's validation of a person accused? And what about you, dear viewer? If you agree with me, then you're validating me. And I didn't even drive here. Remember, it's not about being racist. It's the power one gets making the accusation. The power is zero sum. One can only move forward if another is canceled. Remember the red scare? This is the race scare. It rewards as it punishes. And if you don't think you're next, then you aren't paying attention. Now I gotta run. I have to pee. Don't take my seat. <laughs> All right, Dana, I want to play for you. You know, we're all going to end up having to apologize sooner or later for something. So just get re get your apology letter ready. And I think I came across the best one I've ever heard. Okay. Scott Adams Drink. has created a an apology letter that we can all use. And okay. I urge you to find it. Here's Perfect. a snippet. <laughs> I'm a deeply flawed human. Really, just a pile of organic crap that is barely sentient. I must learn to listen and do better. I am committed to doing the hard work of examining all of my flaws, as described by my critics. And I will force myself to be unhappy until my brain is free of all bias. I am committed to a path of self-improvement that will, with lots of hard work, make me barely acceptable to proper thinking people. I dedicate my entire life to the mission of pleasing my critics. I plan to issue public statements of apology for being me until the end of my days which I think we all agree should come sooner than later. <laughs> I think that if everybody has that in their back pocket, uh, we will all be fine, Dana. But the thing is, Chris Harrison from The Bachelor, yes. he did that. Yes. He basically said all of that, and he actually said it with more feeling. Yes. <laughs> and, like, authenticity. He was, like, trying to bring it across, and it didn't work for him. I have a friend who watches The Bachelorette, or The Bachelor, whatever it is. I asked him about this. He sent me eight paragraphs. <laughs> Of how he feels about it. <laughs> and he's not happy, and he said that um, he, it's supposed to be like mindless viewing, right. but now it's no longer that, and he thinks that, you know, it probably won't do as well. Yeah. Uh, Katie, I want to play you another clip from the talk. This is one of the other co-hosts mm -hmm. talking about Pierce Morgan. Let's go. People feel that he's racist. People have receipts. I wish we had them today so that we could actually go deeper into this uh -huh. conversation so people could see why people feel that he's racist and sexist and misog I mean, there's a lot, but um, we don't have those receipts here. You know, there's a lot. I mean, there's these receipts, hmm. right? But I don't really need to bring them. When I'm accusing somebody of racism, right. I can just say we have the receipts. This is the new McCarthyism, Katie. You don't even need the receipts. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's called the talk, but if Sharon Osbourne wants to actually talk about it, she's not allowed to, and they cancel the show for a few days. Uh, there are receipts that they're not bringing to the conversation, despite knowing that they're going to have this conversation. And if you go back a few steps to look at where this conversation came from on the talk, it came from Piers Morgan criticizing Meghan Markle, and then the co-host of the talk saying they feel as if he is racist. Mm -hmm. But the thing he was criticizing was said by Meghan Markle also didn't have evidence. She claimed that someone in the royal family said something about her son's skin color, but wouldn't say who it was. So all of this has no evidence and no receipts. It's all accusation. And it boils down to this awful situation where we're no longer to, able to judge anybody by their character or by maybe their flaws, but they can get over them. We have to boil it down to you either like someone based on their race or you dislike them based on their race. And that's a really gross place to be. Yeah, you know, Juan, Katie brings up a really good point about the, the whole racism controversy began with just one story from Meghan Markle in which she actually smeared not just royalty, but her actual in-laws. She said her entire in-laws are all racist because she won't say which one over a story that she wouldn't even discuss with them. She wouldn't even talk about whether or not they meant it was racist or not. What kind of person would smear their in-laws completely by saying, well, they asked about, they asked this really bad question. So I'm gonna tell Oprah about it to millions of people. That's kind of rotten. Uh, I think not acknowledging race requires people to look away. And I think Harry, who is not You have to do Harry, that on Oprah and not, not with black, your mother-in-law? I think, okay, hang on, Greg. So uh, Harry my was question. right there, and Harry's the one. I am trying my best. <laughs> Harry know. wouldn't say <laughs> who he, who said this, but Harry totally backed up his wife. But with regard to these TV shows, to, to my mind, this is not about cancel culture in any way. And it's certainly not a serious discussion of race. This is about capitalism. How is it about capitalism? It's about capitalism because, you know what, they want, they want to stop damage to the brand of their shows. And they want to protect uh, against the advertisers bleeding away because these shows have become toxic. It's a free market. It's capitalism. Any network, any show can decide who they want to host the show and the content of their show as they try to make it a success in the capital marketplace. In any case, I don't think we should be looking at The Bachelor or any of these shows as somehow a determinant of what's right and wrong. And I think it's a, you know, in terms of the larger discussion of race, boy, it sure didn't start there, Greg. The, uh, uh, Jesse, um, if these shows are toxic, what is making it toxic? I would argue that it, it, it is the race panic that we're seeing right now. It's the red scare for 2021. I agree, and if this is about capitalism, as Juan says, then they're doing a terrible job. If you're a CBS News executive, you let the ladies talk about it on a show called The Talk. Mm -hmm. Even I would tune in to watch the women who were paid to talk talk about how they feel about Sharon Osbourne and Piers Morgan. That would actually get a rating, and that would make people tune in, and maybe we learn something about it. I did find it ironic, Greg, as you showed the photo of Ozzy Osbourne, who bit the head off a bat, peed on the Alamo, and sang about Satan. He's not canceled, but his <laughs> wife is for defending one of her friends. On the Bachelor Nation situation, Dana brought up the fact that, you know, you, you watch Bachelor not to, to see um, the view. You watch it to see women fight over a guy or vice versa. <laughs> it's like when you go to a checkout counter at a grocery store, you pick up one of those trashy romance novels, you open it up, and it's a political manifesto. No, I want to see Fabio sweep women off their feet and women pull each other's hair to get into Fabio's arms. Okay. That's what you want. You don't want a racial controversy. So now I'm not watching The Bachelor because I get enough racial controversy on my day job. <laughs> I didn't know they had trashy romance novels where you shop. Uh, but anyway, Fabio. How does Jesse know?